Hello, it's good to see you again. Today we're going to start off with a song called Do You Know the Muffin Man? Now this is a simple nursery rhyme that you may know already and I'll tell you a little bit more later why I chose this song to start off with today. So the story of the song is that it was first recorded in England in the year 1820 and of course it talks about this muffin man. Now what is a muffin man? Well, back in those days, they didn't necessarily have grocery stores in the same way that we do these days, right? Where you can just go and walk down the aisles and buy what you need. But in those days, there was actually a muffin man who came and delivered these delicious breads because in those days, a muffin wasn't necessarily the sweet little thing that we might think of as a muffin. It was more of a bread right? Not necessarily as sweet, but more of an English bread. And so he would come around and deliver these special breads to the families that they needed for their everyday lives. And um, I think you could even buy the uh, special breads from the muffin man on the corner as well. You could walk up and say, oh, I'd like one of those muffins. Yes. And so this particular muffin man that's in this song was on Drury Lane. And Drury Lane was a place, a real place in London back in the 1820s when this song was written. And it still exists today. So if you go to visit London, England, you yourself can walk on Drury Lane. Now, I don't know if there's still a muffin man who's serving muffins on Drury Lane, but it'd be interesting to find out, wouldn't it? It really makes me want to go visit and find out. <laughs> well, as I was thinking about this song, I timed it and I figured out that this is yet another song we can use for our hand washing practice. Isn't it cool that there's so many different songs we can use? Yeah, I think it makes this hand washing that we're all doing so much more interesting, right? So many different songs we can use. So let's review the song a little bit and then we'll do our hand washing practice. It's exactly the right length. All right, so it starts out by asking a question. Do you know the Muffin Man? The Muffin Man? The Muffin Man? Do you know the Muffin Man that lives on Drury Lane? And then the song answers back. Yes, I know the Muffin Man. The Muffin Man, the Muffin Man. Yes, I know the Muffin Man who lives on Drury Lane. It's like a little conversation back and forth. And it sounds like this. Do you know the Muffin Man, the Muffin Man, the Muffin Man? Do you know the Muffin Man that lives on Drury Lane? Yes, I know the Muffin Man, the Muffin Man, the Muffin Man. Yes, I know the Muffin Man who lives in Drury Lane. Good. All right, well, let's do it with our hand washing practice all together. We turn on the water, turn off the water, and add our soap. Here we go. Do you know the muffin man, the muffin man, the muffin man? Do you know the muffin man who lives in Drury Lane? Yes, I know the Muffin Man, the Muffin Man, the Muffin Man. Yes, I know the Muffin Man who lives in Drury Lane. Great. Let's wash off that soap. <laughs> off. And, of course, dry your hands very well, even in between your fingers. Good. Well, one thing that I love to do there's so many wonderful things you can do with music, right? But one thing I love to do with songs is I love to change them a little bit or add extra verses to lengthen the songs. And this is something you can do too. So as I was thinking of the Muffin Man, it actually reminded me of my wonderful sister-in-law who is a pastry chef. Now this is a really interesting job that I didn't know much about before I met her. and. Well, I wonder, do you know what a pastry chef is? You might know what a regular chef is, right? But a pastry chef has a really specific job. So they are the person who's responsible for all of the baked goods. So breads in a restaurant. It could be breads or cakes or pies, cookies, 
any desserts. Sometimes they even make ice creams and sorbets. Sometimes they're in charge of designing that part of the menu, figuring out what combinations of food go well together. Sometimes a pastry chef even makes little plates of combinations of cheese with these lovely little crackers that they make. Oh my goodness, just thinking about it makes me hungry. Ooh, or sauces, sometimes they do sauces. Ah, it's a really big job. And if you think about it, Baking a good bread takes a long time and all these other things. So one thing a pastry chef has to do is get up really early in the morning to make sure all these things are ready for the restaurant before it opens. So when I was thinking about how could we sing this song about a pastry chef, about my dear sister-in-law, uh, I thought we could sing it like this. Now, you could sing about where the person lives, where the person is from, like the Muffin Man on Drury Lane, or you could add in some other detail about the person when you're making up your own verses to these songs, right? So let's see, a pastry chef. What do we know about their job? Well, I know that she wakes up with the sun. So let's sing about the pastry chef. It could be like this. Do you know the pastry chef, the pastry chef, the pastry chef? Do you know the pastry chef who wakes up with the sun? Yes, I know the pastry chef, the pastry chef, the pastry chef. Yes, I know the pastry chef who wakes up with the sun. Oh my goodness, she wakes up so early, wakes up with the sun to do all that hard work. Oh, you know who else we could sing about? We could sing about awesome Miss Krista, right? She's one of our primary teachers who just came to our school this year. And what's something we know about Miss Krista? Hmm, ah, we know that she came from Canada. So we could sing about that. Do you know Miss Krista, Miss Krista, Miss Krista? Do you know Miss Krista, who came from Canada? All together, yes, I know Miss Krista, Miss Krista, Miss Krista. Yes, I know Miss Krista, who came from Canada. Yeah, oh my goodness. There are all sorts of things you could sing about, right? And you know, it could really be anything. Um, oh, it could even be silly. You could sing, do you know the marshmallow, the marshmallow, the marshmallow? Do you know the marshmallow who is in my hot chocolate? Yes, I know the marshmallow, the marshmallow, the marshmallow. Yes, I know the marshmallow in your hot chocolate. Isn't that funny? Oh my goodness could be anything. It could be about people you know and love or things you're discovering in the world, anything. Well, so you might ask, why are we singing about muffins, marshmallows, things like that? Well, <laughs> since last time, I've been thinking about all these songs that have food in them, right? And I realized that I actually know a lot of songs that have kind of fluffy, pillowy foods in them. So it gave me a funny idea for today's question of the day. And well, before we go to that, let's think about what is a pillow usually stuffed with? What do you think? Yes, feathers. What else could a pillow be stuffed with? Mm-hmm, sometimes foam, yeah. Feathers or foam or sometimes a special batting or stuffing on the inside of a pillow to make it fluffy, right? Well, my question is, if you could try a pillow stuffed with a food, what would you choose? Isn't that funny to think about? Hmm, fluffy foods. Well, I really do love marshmallows, so I would choose to try a pillow stuffed with marshmallows. Oh my goodness, they're so nice and puffy and spongy. And oh wow, they smell really sweet, so I just know I'd have really sweet dreams with them. Uh, let's see, what else? You could try a pillow made out of mashed potatoes. Oh wow. Oh, or what if you had a pillow made out of a gigantic chocolate chip cookie? Hmm, ah, so soft, so 
comfortable. Hmm, fresh out of the oven. Ah, uh, very comfortable. <laughs> but you know, it wouldn't even have to be a food. You could ask this question about anything. Hmm, what else could a pillow be stuffed with? Ah, maybe leaves. Hmm, that could be comfortable in the fall when they're all big and dried out, if you had a whole pile of them stuffed into a pillow, right? Or, oh, what about snow? What about a pillow stuffed with snow? That would be really great to keep you cold in the summertime, keep your face chilly, nice and chilly for sleeping. But it would get pretty messy, right? When it melted? Ooh. Anyway, fun to imagine these things, right? Well, I thought it would be fun to sing a few more of these <laughs> songs that have pillowy foods in them. So moving on, the next song is about fluffy popcorn. And this is a song that our beloved Miss Karina and Miss Christina taught me years ago. And it's called Popcorn Popping on the Apricot Tree. So just like we talked about a few times ago, robins, the birds, are one of the most wonderful signs of spring that I learned about when I was growing up. Uh, blossoming trees that we're starting to see everywhere where we live are another wonderful sign of spring. And um, if you don't see them quite yet where you're living, I'm sure any day now these blossoms will start to pop out of the trees. And so this is a song about a person noticing the apricot tree in their yard. And if you have ever seen an apricot tree, they are just full of these beautiful white blossoms. They're little and they're just full. The whole tree is full. They're just gorgeous. And so it's fun to imagine how someone could see these blossoms and think that there's something else. So let's talk about what the story says, what the song says. It says, oops, goodness. <laughs> And it has motions too, so let's do the motions together. So the song starts like this. I looked out the window and what did I see? And so you can go like this. I looked out the window or you can make yourself a window. I looked out the window and what did I see? Popcorn popping on the apricot tree. Oh, isn't that neat? Such a great image. Popcorn popping on the apricot tree. So it sounds like this. I'm going to use this to start out with. I looked out the window and what did I see? Popcorn popping on the apricot tree. Isn't that neat? Spring had brought me such a nice surprise. Blossoms popping right before my eyes. Let's do that whole first part. Okay, this time I'm going to use binoculars. I looked out the window and what did I see? Popcorn popping on the apricot tree. Spring had brought me such a nice surprise. Blossoms popping right before my eyes. Nice. And then it goes on to say, I could take an armful and make a treat. So it's like you're scooping up all those blossoms in your arm. A popcorn ball making a popcorn ball with the blossoms, a popcorn ball that would smell so sweet. And then we smell our popcorn ball. <sighs> let's, let's sing that middle part. It says, I could take an armful and make a treat, a popcorn ball that would smell so sweet. <sighs> and then we say, it wasn't really so, but it seemed to be popcorn popping on the apricot tree. And that sounds like this. It wasn't really so, but it seemed to be popcorn popping on the apricot tree. All right, let's do the whole thing together. Which do you want to use? The binoculars looking out the window? or making a window with your hands. Hmm, I'm gonna make a window this time. All right, let's sing it. One, two, one, two, three. I looked out the window and what did I see? Pop 
popcorn popping on the apricot tree. Spring had brought me such a nice surprise. Blossoms popping right before my eyes. I could take an armful and make a treat. A popcorn ball that would smell so sweet. <sighs> it wasn't really so, but it seemed to be popcorn popping on the apricot tree. Oh, I love that song. There it is. Fluffy popcorn. Well, for the next pillowy food, I thought of a spongy, wonderful, yummy cake. Mmm, very comfy. A spongy cake. And I thought of this old song that I think my grandma used to sing. I have a little memory of that. And it's called, If I Knew You Were Coming, I'd Have Baked a Cake. This song was from the year 1950, and it was first recorded by a singer named Eileen Barton. And if you want to look up the recording, it's really fun. So I thought it'd be fun to share this classic old song with you and tell you the story of it. It starts off, uh, I'm just learning it, so I'm going to use my words here that I wrote down. I wrote down all the lyrics. Mm -hmm. Anyway, uh, imagine one day you're just at home and you hear a knock on the door. And surprise, it's a friend that you haven't seen in such a long time. So the song starts off like this. It says, it's like this person is surprised opening the door. Well, 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 look who's here. I haven't seen you in many a year. If I knew you were coming, I'd have baked a cake. Baked a cake, baked a cake. If I knew you were coming, I'd have baked a cake. How'd you do? How'd you do? How'd you do? So this person is saying, oh my goodness, if I knew you were going to come over, I would have baked a cake to celebrate and welcome you, right? So that's, I love that this song is all about making the person feel welcome. And uh, so let's see, then they, at the end of that verse, they say, how'd you do? How'd you do? How'd you do? And that's a little older way of saying, how do you do? Or how are you? How are you? I haven't seen you in forever, right? And then the second verse goes like this. Had you dropped me a letter, I'd have hired a band, the grandest band in the land. So that means if you had sent me a little note to say that you were coming for a visit, I would have hired all these musicians to come in and play for you to welcome you, the grandest band in the land. Had you dropped me a letter, I'd have hired a band and spread the welcome mat for you. They were even going to put out the special mat in front of the door to welcome. So, yeah. Then the middle part says, this is the bridge, it says, now I don't know where you came from because I don't know where you've been, but it really doesn't matter. Grab a chair and fill your platter and dig, dig, dig right in. That person's saying, oh my goodness, it doesn't matter where you've been, where you came from, pull up a chair and eat with us, right? Share our food and keep us company. Be together. Oh, what a lovely idea, huh? Um, so yeah, then it repeats a few more times. So I'm going to share this song with you. And please, it repeats many times. So as soon as you start to get the hang of it, you can join right in. All right. So you're the knock at the door. Well, 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 look who's here. I haven't seen you in many a year. If I knew you were coming, I'd have baked a cake, baked a cake, baked a cake. If I knew you were coming, I'd have baked a cake. How to do, how to do, how to do. Had you dropped me a letter, I'd have hired a band, grandest band in the land. Had you dropped me a letter, I'd have hired a band and spread the welcome mat for you. Now I don't know where you came from, cause I don't know where you've been. 
But it really doesn't matter. Grab a chair and fill your platter and dig, dig, dig right in. If I knew you were coming, I'd have baked a cake. Hired a band, goodness sake. If I knew you were coming, I'd have baked a cake. How'd you do, how'd you do, how'd you do? Now everyone, join me. If I knew you were coming, I'd have baked a cake. Baked a cake, baked a cake. If I knew you were coming, I'd have baked a cake. How'd you do? How'd you do? How'd you do? One more time. If I knew you were coming, I'd have baked a cake. Baked a cake. Baked a cake. If I knew you were coming, I'd have baked a cake. How'd you do? 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 Boom, boom. <laughs> oh, I love that song. You know, Bob Hope and Bing Crosby, who were really famous uh, singers and actors and comedians from that time period, they actually came up with their own version of the song. The song is a nice popular song that's been recorded actually by many people, but Bing Crosby and Bob Hope recorded their own version of the song as well. And they changed the song just like we did with Muffin Man, and they add some more of their, added some more of their own lyrics, different ways of welcoming somebody. So, you know, that's something you could do with this song as well. Let's see, you could think about what other ways could we welcome someone? Oh, I know, we could sing about making tea. If I knew you were coming, I'd have made some tea, made some tea. Goodness me, if I knew you were coming, I'd have brewed some tea. How to do, how to do, how to do. What else? What else could we do? Hmm, well, let me know if you think about anything else. <laughs> well, later today, when your head finally hits the pillow, and I, uh, and you're getting all cozy. I hope that you think back on our time that we spent together today, all these pillowy foods, these different interesting things that your pillow could be stuffed with. And I hope that you have sweet dreams. Maybe you can dream about pillows. <laughs> all right, let's do our goodbye song together. I get my ukulele. Do to do. And here we go. Remember, if you're playing, it starts on a C chord. Here we go. Sing adieu, adios. Now our music ends. So Bye.